The next drill we're going to talk about is Category 5, and this is a drill that uh, really gets the guys fired up. It's a competitive drill. We, uh, if you look on the left side of the screen, it's called rotation. We're just posting the matchups ahead of time, the D-line versus O-line, the linebackers and safeties versus tight ends and fullbacks, and then the DBs versus wide receivers. The, those three categories for us are bigs, combos, and skills. We'll match them up in the locker room, uh, post them, uh, we'll get them all juiced up during stretch, make sure they know who they're going against, and when we get to this drill, it's a lot of fun. As you look at the right side of this diagram, the blue uh, shields there, uh, you know, agile bags represent uh, shoot one. That's the uh, bigs, the O-line versus the D-line. The second uh, grouping there are the linebackers and the bigger safeties versus tight ends and fullbacks. And then the third shoot is DBs versus wide receivers. Uh, the quarterbacks will do nothing more than hand the ball off in this drill and we'll have running backs or anybody, really anybody that uh, carries the ball uh, can run the ball for us. Anybody that has vision and can elude uh, defenders uh, can do that for you. I'll stand over here by the blue shields, uh, and I'll make sure that uh, I not only blow a whistle to start the drill, I'll also give a hand signals because it gets really loud. The offense is on one side, the defense is on the other side. Again, we're trying to train our uh, technique, our fundamentals, and our toughness, uh, but it's also a great drill for team unity, camaraderie. It really brings a lot of energy uh, to the practice, and ultimately we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, develop passion uh, because of it. So we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, but it's one of the drills that the uh, the, the guys like uh, the best. So again, I'll I'll try to start the drill with a whistle, and depending on how loud it is, with a hand signal as well. Uh, here's a great example of the running back having vision, weaving through there. We don't want him to change the ball uh, on that second level. Uh, I'd like to see him finish with a burst here, right here, burst away from it and explode. If you just look at the second level now, 56 and number 7, if you're looking at it from a defensive standpoint, one of the often uh, mistakes uh, of young defenders when they're trying to defeat a block is just to reach for the ball carrier. It's much more important to strain uh, and shed and then move your feet laterally. Get off the block laterally. Get your, get your back leg outside the framework. That's going to allow you to do more than just arm tackle. You'll get your body in front of the ball carrier, be able to club and finish. A common mistake here by 56 and 7 on the second and third level. Again, good finish by the safety here, good finish by the, the linebacker. And again, uh, ball security. Running back's got to tuck it away. Uh, this is an instance here at the first level here where you see the defensive tackle number 54. He'll get a good lockout, but it's not good enough to lock out. You've got to strain and move this foot. If the running back is coming this way, you've got to get this foot right down the middle and then get this near foot out, just like you're shuffling. And that will allow you to get outside, get your body outside the framework and allow you to, at that point, club and base, get a good tackle. Okay, uh, again, he's going to leave this foot here. He's not going to strain before he sheds. He's just going to lock out and shed. And you really got to, that, that, that second step, that second phase, that strain shed uh, before you disengage is really critical here. Again, really combative drill. Good thud by uh, number 20 there, Thomas Finney. Good finish by 58. And we always talk to our guys about being six-second competitors. Well, this here is an Oklahoma drill, okay? So this is a really combative drill. But this second level here and this third level here, that's the difference between being a playmaker and then just having an average play. Having a game-changer play, a run that, that would have been 10 or 12 yards, and then all of a sudden we get a six-second competitor from one of these two guys here in the game, and they keep their blocks and then we get an explosive run. The same is true for the defenders here now. If they can lock out uh, two gap, be able to use their hands, move their feet, strain and shed, and then ultimately finish, we're going to we're going to defeat the block uh, and eliminate the the explosive plays from the offensive repertoire. So it's really a great drill. It's a drill that uh, it's a drill that we like to to teach a lot and then take our training to the game.
if you look at 98 in this instance compared to the, the previous tackle that we showed, uh, you, clearly you'll see here as he tries to disengage the back leg, the leg away from the intended direction. The intended direction is this way. You have to move the leg away from the intended direction. Get it down the midline, get it down the midline of your body or of the, of the blocker's body and then shuffle the near leg out. Once you do that, you lock out with the near arm and then you rip and run or you strain and shed, whatever you want, whatever technique you call, but you got to get your hips outside of his hips to make that tackle. Arm tackles don't, don't help you. Great job there. Tremendous job. A lot of energy by the team, by the coaches, everybody involved. Here's a great example of what we're talking about when, we, when we're, when we're uh, speaking of finishing plays. Here's Shane McDermott, our center, versus uh, Olivier Vernon, our defensive end, who's now with the Miami Dolphins. But Shane truly does a great job staying on the block, playing for six seconds, giving us every bit of six seconds, and allowing the running back to get through, and then finishing his play. And in this drill, finishing is what we're teaching. Very combative on this level here in this play. Again, you'll see, uh, you'll see how the guys finish. We're trying to uh, you know, train and discipline in everybody's mind, a clock in their mind of what, how long six seconds is, and to give it uh, for their teammates every play. You can see how juiced up the offense is on this play. It, again, it's a great drill uh, for everybody. A lot of unity, a lot of camaraderie here. Let's just look at this, okay, as a Category 5, our first level drill right here. So uh, between our nose tackle here and their guard, this is nothing more than Category 5. 98 for us is a little bit high, but you get the idea of, of being able to knock it back, playing, playing strong, trying to play square. He got turned a little bit, but he is, he is finishing the play. That's what we're looking for. Here's a great example now because it really provides us a look at all three levels of the Category 5 drill. We're on, on here on the front side of the zone. We are getting to the second level here with the fullback. And then the third level, this is really always the six-second competitor. Now, we get a good block here, and it, it results in about a 10 or 12-yard uh, run. But if you can run this guy out of here or get him on the ground, you have a chance always to get explosive plays, all right? And that's what we're trying to teach, and that's what we're trying to train the guys every day. Take your training to the game. Uh, and this is a great example of a, of a good play here where, where all three levels of the Category 5 drill are shown in this play. Again, good effort by uh, Leron Bird, number two on the perimeter. Uh, you know, he was combative, but... Again, we're looking for a little bit extra finish there to give us, just give us a little crack that we can hit. Well executed play here, getting guys on the ground. Good finish by the running back, not going out of bounds. Well done. Here's another example again. All right, this is category five drill right here. And if you don't give us six seconds, especially versus this look, okay, uh, then, then uh, we're not going to be able to get the type of explosive play we want. We'll get a nice run, but we've got to get six seconds on the perimeter. In this look here now, all right, uh, that's, cat, that's the, the uh, level one of the Category 5 drill, both of these guys. Here's your level two, and I already pointed out, here's your level three. In this instance here, we also have some backside guys that end up being level three, and again, we're looking for six seconds. Don't just run down there. Run down there with the intent that you're going to finish. Run down there with the intent that you're going to cut. Okay, and clearly you run the ball here as a running back, all right? All right? Like you are going to score every single time. Don't be surprised uh, by how open it, it, it becomes. Again, we need a little bit better block on the perimeter. Again, let's look at it from this. Uh, that's your level one. Here's your level two. That's a level one. That's a level two. Okay, and then out here, 
this wide receiver versus this DB. That's the biggest one. We've got to make sure that we, we hold that block and get the type of block that we want there. And again, we're always talking about six second competitors. All right, we are full zoning it on the back side. All right, and then of course the quarterback ball fake is critical for us in our success here at all. Again, in this case, we don't do a good job of holding the SAM. We don't do a great job over here all right, with the X. And it's the, those two that converge 15 yards down the field to make the play versus our running back. Okay, so let's take a look at it and see all right, where we go wrong because this is how you deserve victory. Everybody finishing every single play and, and tilting the odds of the game in your favor. Okay, so it's a great drill. We've got to take our train to the game, and then, then you always have a lot of fun with it. Again, when we do this, at the end of the drill, we flip it. So now we take our defensive uh, linemen, and we put them over here on offensive line. We take those big old fat centers and guards, and we let them play defensive tackle for a day. We take our linebackers and our big safeties, and we put them over here as tight ends and fullbacks. We take that big old tight end or fullback and put them over here as a linebacker. We take those safeties and DBs. Put them over here as wideouts, and then we, we, we uh, take all those wideouts all right, that are long and to be defensive backs, and we put them over here, and then we have a lot of fun with it. Again, guys get juiced up. It uh, creates a lot of energy. Great for camaraderie. Great team drill. At the end of the day, what are you talking about? Everybody getting one or two reps? That's about it. That's all I get. But, uh, again, we're having fun. We're, we're training competitiveness. We're training toughness. All right? And, uh, and we're, getting in, uh, we're getting really good reps against our best competition. You can see the guys get all juiced up, have a lot of energy, makes it a lot of fun. I'm not sure uh, what this is here, but that is an awful dance. Maybe we should see it from both, uh, both angles. Again, we're just having a lot of fun with it, letting the guys compete. I'm going to go super slow here on this dance. That's how bad it is. So let's just wrap up this segment uh, by looking at uh, two you know, final clips from the 2012 uh, preseason camp. And uh, I think it's important uh, that the kids understand, uh, especially in the dog days of August, uh, how to have fun, uh, you know, how to play with energy, and, uh, and obviously how to practice and then ultimately play on game day with a lot of passion. And that's what we try to teach here. And uh, again, this is a competitive drill. Uh, but we're also to, uh, teaching them to enjoy the, the battle, you know, and, and uh, to, you know, look at competition uh, as something that, uh, you know, be becomes part of your uh, DNA, if you will. And, and this is one of the ways to do that, uh, getting kids to enjoy that competition every day in August. Let's take a look at this uh, run here. This is Randy Johnson, our uh, rookie of the year in the ACC, uh, spinning out of attack on the second level. And then, uh, well, I'll let you look at it. Absolutely uh, dead legging uh, the third level. And, uh, and the offense goes uh, wild here. Look at that. Uh, so, again, a lot of fun here. Coaches going crazy. Everybody laughing. Good stuff. You know, and that's what we're looking for uh, in August. And, uh, again, uh, you know, you, uh, you'll become what you, uh, what you do every day. And, and uh, we try to play with a lot of passion here at the University of Miami and, and practice that way. And uh, we, we believe uh, what you coach and what you teach uh, You'll see, uh, you'll see on the field be reflected in your team's play. But uh, just a great job here. Uh, really a six-second play <laughs> and a lot of fun with the coaches going crazy. And the last clip will show, uh, it just shows, uh, you know, uh, what a tight group we are, just coaches and players and uh, how much fun we have during practice here. Take a look at, uh, at this one here. We actually get a ball on the ground here, which we don't want to do. Uh, nobody wants to do, but... Coach Williams comes up and uh, scoops and scores here. And, uh, again, we're just trying to have a lot of fun. So it's a, uh, a great drill and uh, something I think you'll enjoy at every level.